What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Gio, and this is week five of season eight of the GBA. The San Francisco Giantes are going up against Coach Z and the Columbus Chew. If you are curious about the team we brought this week, you can see it on that side. And if you want to know more about why I brought what I brought, you can check out the locker room, which is the video that went up on my channel immediately prior to this one. So we are loaded up. Coach Z has been very patient with me. So thank you so much, uh, sir. Let the battle begin. Looking at... Uh, a lot of potential things you could be bringing here. Maybe Excadrill, Clefable, Porygon 2, Sneasel, Mega Ampharos, and Manaphy, I guess is what I think. It, it really, he could go a lot of ways with this. He could play very offensive. He could play very defensive. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know Coach Z very well, so I don't know what he's going to do. But I'm almost positive Excadrill, Clefable, and P2 come. And then probably Sneasel. And depending on how much work he thinks they can put in, probably another offensive Mon like Mega Ampharos or Manaphy. And then the last Mon could be anything, really, depending on what he fears the most. So we'll kind of see what's going on here. I've selected Elite Four as the music I'm going to be bringing. I've got my calcs here. All right, please select the bring Pokemon. What do you have, Coach Z? Manaphy, he does bring the Blaziken, uh, no wheezing, uh, he's actually running very offensive, so he does have the Sneasel, no Porygon 2, uh, no Mien Xiao, Manaphy yes, no Fero, Excadrill, no Clefable, man this, Coach Z is running very offensive, no he does have that, what is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there we go, that's the 6 he's bringing, very good on his part, I was not uh, anticipating all of these. So let's go uh, plug these in over here. That runs Hydration, Excadrill, Manaphy, Sneasel, Mega Ampharos, Celebi, and Blaziken. Okay, so uh, outright we see that he's very weak to ground. Three ground weaknesses, only one resist. Uh, he's weak to fairy, two fairies, uh, two fairy weaknesses, only one resist. And looking at this, uh, we're going to lead out with B unit. Oh god, no, I hit summary. Shoot, how much time do I have? Thirteen seconds, so let's kind of think this through a little bit. Leading B unit because Sneasel could be a fake out lead, so I could do that. It threatens the Celebi if that's his rocker. Not a great matchup versus the Excadrill if that's like a lead rocks Excadrill or something, but we'll see what's going on. Good luck, Coach Z. Very offensive team. Very, very offensive team. So let's see what we're going to uh, what we're gonna do here. Coach Z. Ruin. Ruin the Celebi. Great. So I'm gonna scare this thing out right away. Um, looking at this, I mean, he knows I'm Bug type. He's got to be fearing the uh, Pollen Puff or uh, Bug Buzz or whatever. He's got to be fearing it. I can pop off a quiver dance here, then I outspeed everything. <laughs> uh, the Excadrill is a possible switch in, Hidden Power Ground is very good against it. So I could just click that right away and just try and get as much damage on that as possible. I could also just Moonblast outright for damage. Uh, I'm gonna quiver dance first. I think, I mean, either he fears the bug and he makes a hard switch right now, or uh, he doesn't fear it and goes straight away for rocks. If he really wants them, I'm gonna... If I think he's gonna switch, Quiver Dance is not the best move because I could have just two hit KO'd the Excadrill with Hidden Power Earth twice. Which maybe I should do. Uh, then again, I don't know if it's scarfed, so... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna hit Hidden Power Ground and hope that he switches. He does withdraw. Show me! Irreverent. Which one is that? Yes! HP Ground on this fool! 
Is it two hit KO? It does not, but that's okay. That's some beautiful damage. And he's gonna have to go for... Well, Iron Head is the most obvious play here. He could predict me to switch and go for the Earthquake against the Tox effects. Uh, and then I can kind of see what he is. Yeah, I can see what he is after that. Um, if he goes for the Iron Head, I'd love the chip damage. Yeah, I'd really, really like the chip damage from uh, DMX. So let's see, and uh, we're going to get a, a calculation off on what Irreverent does. I think he's going to go for the Iron Head, because he's taken damage. He's behind the 8-ball already. Let's have a look at uh, what kind of set this could be based on the damage I've dealt to it. It's a little less than 50%. Um, yeah, that's just a normal roll. No defensive investment. DMX is going to come in. And uh, Toxapex is going to give it to you. Ooh, a poison jab. Interesting. So that's not going to do much. Uh, and he can't poison me. And I'm going to Rocky Helmet him. And then he's Life Orb. Excellent. This is fantastic. This is really fantastic for me. So, because he can pop off an EQ fine and if he does he won't kill me a life orb eq does not kill me on toxapex and i can uh, probably finish him off with scald let's verify yeah scald will hit him for 36 to 45 percent his obvious sorry obvious is the wrong word his best switch in here is probably the manaphy uh, if he's anticipating a scald it could also be the celebi so thinking that Shaman is very good against the Manaphy, but I need it. I need it healthy for the Mega Ampharos. I got to be very careful with that. I might be best to just Scald. He might just go for the EQ to do as much damage as he can to Toxapex. Then what do I do against the Manaphy? Yeah, I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to Scald here. I can Toxic the Manaphy. He is going to go for the EQ. That won't kill me, even with a Life Orb. Did do a lot, uh, but now I'll be able to finish it off, and that is one of his major threats out of the way right now. Absolutely massive threat on his part, gone. Uh, where is it? I need to click it off. Excadrill. So, we are up. He does have a lot of offensive threats, I will, I will say that. And I am weakened, and looking at his team actually... There's not a ton I need this for. Uh, I guess it's a it's probably my best answer to Blaziken, but Blaziken's slow. If it's choice scarfed, I can see what it locks itself into. I'm thinking either Mega Ampharos here or he goes Manaphy and tries to set up. If he does go Manaphy, I'm just going to spam Haze Purge. The Blaziken. I mean, you're gonna... You're gonna potentially take damage here. I mean, he could try setting up with something. Like, I wouldn't love to take the damage that on upon switch out. What do I need DMX for? I mean, it's for this. If he kills this, what do I do next? Probably the Haxorus? But I don't know if this is if this is scarfed or not yet. I'm thinking. All right, let's think. I don't think he'd click fire stab here. I don't need the scissor. Kind of what I want to do is switch, get my rege uh, my regenerator on, switch to Scizor uh, on what I imagine will be, if he sets up, that's my, <laughs> that's my concern. I don't want to let him set up on me. Because what would I do if that happens? Maybe I just sack DMX here. I don't want to give him the opportunity to set up, but I think he just wants the kill. I'm going to play Ballsy. I'm going to go Proto here because I don't see Fire as his move of choice here. 
I see like or something along those lines. EQ, which uh, I will take okay, and we'll get to scout this and see how much damage it does. 173 down to 114. And I haven't even Mega Evolved yet. It could be a non-boosted thing, like an Expert Belt or something like that. He hit me for 59. Which is... Like, not... <laughs> it's like the lowest low roll. I could see him even... Do that's like lower... Oh, that's because he's not an attack boosting nature. He's probably jolly or something along those lines. Yeah, okay. That's a mid-roll for a jolly uh, no boosting item. So he could be scarfed. He could be. And if he isn't, then he'll switch it up for a fire type of att a type attack now. So let's go back into DMX. Um, and we'll see. If he clicks Earthquake again... Uh, which I think he did because he stayed in. Uh, then DMX will probably go down here. No, he does switch it up. He goes for Flare Blitz this time. So he'll take some damage. He'll take some Rocky Helmet damage. Uh, he does get the Burn, which is a little unfortunate. But I get a couple of... Uh, I get a thing. So now we know that he can switch items. So it's probably an Expert Belt or something along those lines. Good to know, that means that the Haxorus will outspeed him. So, looking at that, uh, I also want to know how much... Mew will also outspeed. Psychic just m absolutely murders him. Just so much death and destruction to that poor, poor man. Uh, so I could possibly come in. I just want to make sure he doesn't have... Uh, I'm... I'm going to just sack the DMX here. Um, uh, he could have been a focus sash, I guess. Uh, let's see. Could have swords dance. What does he have for psychic? Does he have dark type? Or ghost type? Could learn fling, I guess. Bone claws. He does get knockoff. So I would have to attack outright. I wouldn't be able to... Um... Yeah, so let's sack DMX here, now that we know. Yeah, let's sack DMX. As he goes for Earthquake, DMX will go down here. And now we got some options. Uh, we know... With Excadrill gone, uh, he has... No poison resists. Uh, no rock resists. I don't have any rock. He's very weak to bug. But what's in right now is not weak to bug. I... Knowing that I outspeed... Toys R Us is probably the best option. Just because he might have knockoff. And I think knockoff would kill Mew. I would have to go right away for the Psychic. Uh, which might be okay as long as Mew can guaranteed Oko the Sneasel. Uh, which it has a chance to, but is not a guarantee. And I don't want to risk clicking Nasty Plot against this uh, in that circumstance. So probably better to go Toys R Us. Um, confidently outspeed. I can click EQ. Or he doesn't have a fairy, so I could just click Outrage if I wanted to do that also. So let's force that right now. Mew still has a chance to win this game. Toys R Us going to come in. He has no Clefable. He has no Dragon Resist. He cannot outspeed me. Outrage will kill him. Earthquake will kill him. Poison Jab will not kill him, but will Z Poison Jab kill him? Yes, probably. 85 to 102 if he doesn't have any defensive investment. So I could click Z Poison Jab here on the chance that he switches in, say, the Celebi, 
to try and tank the uh, likely earthquake. Which I think I want to do. Since I don't really need to save the poison jab for anything. I do like that idea. Uh, do I think he can kill me with anything? Low kick could potentially do a lot. We've seen Earthquake, we've seen Flare Blitz. Low kick could do a lot, but it, it won't kill me. So I could just Dragon Dance here, and then I might... No, because if I take damage, then Sneasel can come in and counter me. Potentially do something there. Let's Poison Jab here. Uh, sorry, Z Poison Jab. He's going to stay in. He's going to stay in. This should kill him. <laughs> uh, there's a chance it doesn't, but it should. Acid Downpour. Yes! Okay. Blaziken gone. Phew. Blaziken gone. Okay. So, obviously, it would have been nice if he'd predicted the EQ and gone into Celebi. I could have just clicked EQ there. Celebi does have the chance to outspeed me, of course, because it's a base 100, and if it's not a defensive set and it has speed investment, then it will outspeed me. He's got to know I have the poison now. And having lost Blaziken, uh, that now means he has no bug resist, no rock resist, no dragon resist still, and no fairy resist. Which actually he hasn't had for a while. So let's think. Sneasel could come in. Arbiter. That's the Manaphy. Ice Beam won't one-hit KO me if he's timid set. Uh, if he's Life Orb, will it? It has a chance to if he's Life Orb. Huh. I don't want to give him a free Tail Glow. Because if he's like Tail Glow Sub-Zero Slammer, then... Uh, <laughs> Then I'm definitely in trouble. If he's Life Orb, he will kill me here. If he's set up, he won't after one Ice Beam. Let's think. It really depends on his item, which I don't know yet. But if he clicks, yeah, it's too risky for me if he clicks Tail Glow here. I really don't think he does. I think he just wants to kill the Toys R Us. I think he clicks Ice Beam here. Uh, but it's too risky for me to switch. So I think I could, well, if I'm going to die to one hit, I might as well Dragon Dance and have the potential to Oko him and then sweep him. He is going to go straight for the Ice Beam. So I will outspeed him next turn if I live this. Which I do, and I get a Dragon Dance up. Oh, this is amazing, actually. This is a really good potential for me. Because now I have a chance to Oko him. I mean, I guess he could be Scarfed. Did I just goof? Oh, man, I should have just clicked Outrage. Oh, well, we'll see what happens. Outrage will do a ton of damage. I'll outspeed everything except an Ice Shard from the Sneasel. I do get this off. This might kill the Manaphy. Yes! Manaphy goes down! This wasn't even my, uh, my sweep of- my sweeper of choice, actually. This was not. So now I know that I outspeed everything. Retribution, of course. The Sneasel. I don't really have a switch- oh, I'm- I'm locked into Outrage. So my, my hope here is that he goofs and does not click Ice Shard. Like, he forgets that I'm locked in. Nah, he's just going to Ice Shard. That'll take me out, of course. Uh, that's okay, though. I, this wasn't even my sweep to win Pokemon. I could go B unit here. 
because B unit will outspeed Retribution. Don't know a lot about it. No, it's not Life Orb. Could be Choice Band. A banded Jolly Ice Shard will not kill B unit. B unit without even a boost will uh, Oko him back. There's a chance that Ice Shard doesn't even two hit KO me. So I could maybe even get to plus one, but I don't really see the point in that because there's still Celebi. And we don't know a lot about the Celebi actually. In fact, looking at this, is the Celebi gonna be a problem? For no, I have Sludge Wave on the Mew. So B unit can outspeed, tank an Ice Shard, and potentially really threaten the Retribution. But so would a, a Bullet Punch from Proto. Bullet Punch from Proto does give the potential to... Yeah, let's just do that. Let's bring in Proto. I need to click off my Z-move from my Haxorus as well. Bump. Okay. We Mega Evolve. U-turn would kill Retribution as well, but then it would force me to take an attack from him, which I want to verify that I can do before I do anything stupid here. Uh, if he's Choice Bend, then he can't switch off Ice Shard and he'll do basically nothing. He could be, I don't know, Ice Plate or something. He really doesn't do anything to Proto. He really doesn't. He does nothing to me. So I don't even care. I could just go for the... I could go for the U-turn here. He doesn't really have a switch in. Yeah, let's Mega Vol and U-turn. See what he's going to go for. He's going to withdraw. If he goes Celebi, he's dead to this U-turn. Penance? Do I know Penance already? Uh, that's his... Oh, I could potentially get staticked. But this brings me a free switch into lots of things. Uh, potentially the Rabombi. Oh my god, he does get the static, which is unfortunate, absolutely unfortunate, but my god, that did so much damage. So what we know is the Sneasel, if it has a Focus Sash, could be a problem. Penance uh, won't outspeed Tefiti. Tefiti has Earth Power. Uh, then the Sneasel could come in, and I would have to sack Tefiti. I could go Rabombi. Rabombi would just uh, kill outright at the HP he's remaining. What I'm wondering is if I could potentially set up on it. No, I can't take a, a Thunderbolt. So I'd have to just kill it. Yeah, just Moonblast it to its, uh, to its tiny little face. Could Mew tank? I don't really want to just risk so much right now. Do I have time to calc this? Mega Ampharos uh, might live a hit from, from that. So let's just go B unit. Don't want to risk not killing the Mega Ampharos uh, with the Mew. And even though it couldn't kill me and I could have gotten, ow, oh, I should have done that and gotten a nasty plot up. Ah, I was so worried about whether or not I killed him in one hit, but I shouldn't have been. So let's just moon blast here, pick up our kill on penance. If he switches, I'm not sure why he would. Everything outspeeds him already and he's very weak. I guess he was thinking I was going to click uh, bullet punch against the Sneasel. Megases are so good against that Sneasel. I really would have liked to set up with B unit, uh, but I'm not gonna risk it. We're just gonna Moon Blast. He doesn't Mega Evolve, uh, but he still goes down. Rabombi picking up his first kill of the season. Way to go, B unit. So I don't see him switching into Celebi here because he's got to fear the bug attack. I didn't hard switch against him. 
What can Rabombi really do against that thing? Like, I don't want to... I don't want to risk something like uh, he's... Swords Dance Baton Pass into the Sneasel. Although, I don't think I need to worry because Ice Shard isn't even at like plus whatever isn't going to hurt Mega Scizor. Like, okay, let's worst case scenario this. He's choice banded. He gets to like, I don't know. Let's just be weird. He gets a plus four. He has to ice shard. That's the only thing he has for Mega Scizor. And it does 26 to 31. Because otherwise I'll outspeed him and kill him with the, uh, with the bullet punch. And that's if he's choice banded. So if he's not choice banded, so he is going to go Celebi. Potentially banking on me not having... Yeah, potentially banking on me not having a bug type attack. So interesting. And unfortunate that it's such a good move. He could have HP fire. He might have to reveal that now. Uh, if I get to plus one, the HP fire, actually, yeah, I should quiver dance on his face. After one quiver dance, I don't see him being able to kill me with HP fire. I resist psychic. Oh, and Giga Drain, sorry. Uh, and then even though at plus one, Moonblast won't kill as well, uh, I still like this. Uh, and I could pen potentially play Roost Games. He can't get any secondary effects. He's got Sucker Punch. It's going to fail because I'm going to Quiver Dance. And that would have done very little damage anyway. So now I'm at plus one. Plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. He's physical, or at the very least, just packs the... Uh, just packs the Sucker Punch. Celebi. So that means he might be a setup Baton Pass set. Whew. What are you looking at physical coverage-wise? Could have Aerial Ace, but why wouldn't he have just clicked that? He almost certainly thought... I mean, I don't... I guess he's physical, but I don't really know what he's got. I'm not going to run the risk that he does have something that can really put the work on me. Aerial Ace could do a lot... That's... so oh no, I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. Uh, I really just don't want to risk this at this point. I know I outspeed, and I four times resist the Sucker Punch. So let's just click Moonblast here. He does not click Sucker Punch this time, so if he's going to try and do some kind of setup thing... Oh my god, a crit! Okay, I don't know what his set was. That might have mattered a lot. Uh, in fact, I'm almost positive it does matter. Oh, I'm so sorry, Coach Z. That almost certainly does matter. Yep. Yep, that matters. That matters a lot. That matters a lot, a lot, a lot. Let's click Moonblast here. Um, if he's Sash and he goes for uh, an Ice Attack, then he can... Uh, I'll break his Sash and then win with Scizor. So I think we have this. It's just whether or not we get 3 or 4-0 against Coach Z here. dead that crit really did matter i don't know what his set was but unless it was like minus special defense no there's just there's no way that didn't matter there's no way i didn't have the bug coverage for him at plus one non-crit moon blast against a no defensive investment celebi no hp no special defense does 67 to 79 with a crit, it does 101 to 118. If he put his... Yeah, he's going to go straight for the Ice Shard. Uh, this should two-hit KO me. Not even that. So he might be Focus Sash, actually. No Focus Sash. That bad boy goes down. Robombi with the three kills? Oh my goodness. This newcomer bringing it to Coach Z and the Columbus Chew. 4-0 victory in favor of the Giantes. Oh, You know, it's scary when you see Toxapex go down, especially because when I brought it, I thought it really hard-walled his whole team, but I was predicting such a defense.
offensive team bring. And this was massively offensive. Uh, so great prep on Coach Z's part, but at the end of the day, just too much force back on my end. And I think I had just a few too many answers. He tried to make something work preserving the Sneasel, but um, just didn't end up working out for him. So GG to Coach Z. You guys, I don't know if you guys know this, like whenever I say his name, I'm thinking like in my head, you guys watch Strong Bad emails or Coach Z from Homestar Runner? And he has this song, it's like, Coach Z, one, two, one, two, Coach Z, one, two, one, two. But he's got like this heavy, really over-dramatized Canadian accent. So he's like, Coach Z, one, two, one, two. Coach Z, Coach Z, one, two, one, two. Coach Z, one, two, one, two. Oh, Coach Z's gone. Alright, he's hitting me up on Discord. I'm gonna go chat with him. You guys should definitely go check out Coach Z. I will leave a link to his channel uh, in the comment section down below. 4-0 victory for us, which undoes the negative 4 that we took from our first two losses. And the 3s that we have cancelled out. So we are now 2-3 and three with uh, a 0 differential. So more losses than wins and we're still at, at a 0 differential. This is a big win for us. We really need to start getting those wins back on the right track. Really looking forward to uh, our next week's combatant. I need to check who it is. I think it's Tom and the San Jose Sharpedo. So we'll be looking forward to that. Have a great day, everybody. And thank you for stopping by. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. See you guys next time.